This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 72 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's topic is sponsored by Equestrian Collections. For all of your fall and winter needs for rider or horse, visit equestriancollections.com. Enjoy today's tip. I am Glenn the Geek from Lexington, Kentucky, and welcome back to Horse Tip Daily. Today we have back with us a good friend of the Horse Radio Network and someone I enjoy speaking with very much. Craig Thompson is an international eventer and clinician. He is well known for teaching abil- his teaching abilities and has a loyal following of students. He runs the popular Aiken Eventing Camp and the Aiken Event Horse Sale. In addition, he was one of the founding members of the Professional Riders Organization for Eventers. Craig has done several other tips. If you visit the website at uh, horsetipdaily.com, on the left-hand side uh, border there, you'll see drop-down menus where you can search for the uh, experts. And if you pick Craig Thompson, you'll see all of his other tips as well, if you'd like to listen to them in order. Not that you have to. They can be listened to in any order you'd like. They're all individual. Well, everyone, with all the rain that has drenched the east coast of the United States over the last month, I know many of you are looking for rain gear for yourself and or your horse. Well, EquestrianCollections.com should be your first stop for all of your rain gear for the fall and winter. You know, with dozens of selections of the top name brands of jackets and coats at prices you will love. And for your horse, you will find all the name brand waterproof blankets and sheets that you will ever want or need. Make EquestrianCollections.com your first stop for all of your fall and winter needs. Use the code STABLESCOOP at checkout. Use the coupon code STABLESCOOP, two words, at checkout, and you'll get $10 off your next order of $120 or more. That's the coupon code STABLESCOOP. Now let's get to Craig Thompson. Hi, Craig, and welcome back to Horse Tip Daily. Glad to be here. You know, it's always so much fun. We we tend to get sidetracked a lot, and I think that's because we, we just think a lot alike uh, about many different things. But that, I think, is what kind of makes this show fun, is we get to do compare, we get to compare life stories and, and to chat a little bit with the experts about, you know, even getting a little off the topic. But everything, you know, we, we you and I, in a couple of these tips, have not talked about horses a whole lot and just life life stuff, but but that all relates. Well, it does all fit together. I mean, horses are such a part of our lives. I don't see how you can separate them that much. Right, because what you do outside the horses does affect what you do with the horses. It it all oh, absolutely it all absolutely. it all's there. So, what are we talking about today? Well, I'll try to stay on topic a little bit today. Okay. But I wanted to well, talk I'll try about to, nose... too, then. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to talk about nose bands a little bit, which is you know sort of an essential part of our our kit, an essential part of our equipment. Um, so often I show up to teach a clinic or I have somebody come for a riding lesson and they might have the right nose band on, but it's fitted so badly that it's not doing them any good. And, you know, everybody's got different reasons. Everybody comes from a different background and, and thinks differently about how a nose band ought to fit. But to me, if a horse's mouth isn't closed around a bit, it doesn't matter what bit you have in their mouth. It's not going to do you any good. And, that doesn't mean that we crank a nose band on a horse's nose so, so tight that it's cutting off the circulation, but it does mean that before we say, gosh, I need a bigger bit or I need a more powerful bit, we need to make sure that the nose band is working for us and not against us. Um, there's a big difference between riding a show hunter on a flat surface over eight jumps in a ring with a snaffle and a cavison nose band loosely fitted than there is riding an event horse cross country. And cross-country riding, by its very nature, tends to make horses brave and make them a little bit strong. So we end up using bridles on event horses that are maybe a little different than some of the other sports use, certainly different than a hunter would wear or a dressage horse would wear. But, you know, I think when I watch somebody in the warm-up and they look somewhat out of control or they wish they had something else going on, you know, you see a three-ring bit or you see a gag or some sort of leverage, and it's not doing any good because the horse's mouth is open. And so, you know, we, I think we have to be real aware that if we're just using a plain cavison, that it needs to be fit close to the cheekbones, right up to the bottom of the cheekbones. And it needs to be 
firmly around the horse's mouth. It might be fit, it might be fit softly or more sympathetically if we're in the dressage or the show jumping, but if we're going to go cross country, it probably needs to be closed around their mouth pretty darn well. And if the cavison isn't enough, before I would take the snaffle bit out of the horse's mouth, I would turn it back, take that cavison off, and I'd use a flash nose band, which would, uh, you know, apply some control to the jaw both above and below the bit. And again, if you can fit three fingers between the strap and the horse's jaw, the nose band's not doing you any good. Uh, when I think of the hardest horses I've ever ridden cross country, they are horses who crossed their jaw or twisted their jaw. Yep. Yep. And and so something like a flash nose band can, is, to me, is sort of the, the second step beyond just a plain cavison. Uh, and then if a flash nose band's not doing the trick, to me the next step is a figure eight nose band, which controls the jaw up even higher. And it, it's fairly similar to a flash nose band, but I feel like you can get a bit more, uh, a bit better effect out of it for preventing a horse from crossing their jaw. And then the nose bands that have become popular in the, just the last couple of years, and for me, were the difference with uh, an advanced horse named Orion. I was finally able to ride Orion fast enough cross country when I started using a thing called a lever nose band, which has two pieces of metal, one on either side of the horse's jaw. So when the horse goes to twist his jaw, these metal brackets prevent him from doing that. And the benefit of that is that we can keep a snaffle type of bit in the horse's mouth. And a snaffle type of bit is really, to me, the best bit. It's the bit that lets us soften a horse's jaw, guide a horse left and right, you know, use a, a, a methodical increase in bridle pressure, whereas something like a three-ring bridle or a gag is a little bit all or nothing. We pull on it and we get the leverage effect and then we release it, but it's very hard to be articulate with one of those bits. Um, so this is something I've been thinking a lot about in my teaching and, and watching horses go lately. And it's something, one of the first things I do when somebody shows up for a lesson is I just sort of look to see how their nose band is fit. And even if if it's a, a four-year-old and it's got a cavison on and hasn't learned to go cross country yet, if the horse's mouth is open, it doesn't matter what bit you put in its mouth. It's not going to do you much good. Right. We used to use, like, or I've heard in the past, the one finger rule. You said three yeah. fingers too loose. Yeah, um, did you... I, I tend to think that one finger is fine for dressage, fine for show jumping, fine for a younger horse who hasn't really learned what cross country means yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I do find that as a horse goes up through the levels, you need to tighten it up a little bit from there. Okay. All right. Um, well, that's, that's great. Something and, uh, else we don't often think about. Well, there you go. I mean, before you change your bit, think about changing your nose band. All right, great. Well, thank you, Craig. Uh, where, where can people find out more about you and what you do? And are you taking new students at this point? Or I really like teaching, so I'm always happy to help. Uh, and we get real busy here with people in the winter coming to Aiken, but I do teach year-round. Um, people can find me online at craigthompsonyvetting.com. Uh, there's a Contact Us page. And, uh, you know, I, I like teaching, so I hope people come by and take a lesson. All right, great. And and they can also find out about uh, the Professional Riders Organization, which you were a founding uh, member of. That's right. Uh, professionalriders.org is a great organization. I hope everybody will stop by there, too, and think about becoming a member. All right, great. Thanks, Craig. Thank you, Glenn. Well, thank you to Craig for joining us again. You can stop by our website and look under the Expert tab, and you'll find Craig Thompson and his bio page, and you'll find all the links to the sites he mentioned. That's the easiest way to, for you to find a link you hear on the show. And also, you can find all the other tips that he's done in the past and uh, stop by and take a listen to those as well. If you'd like to drop me an email, say hi, or whatever, you can do so at Glenn with two N's at horseradionetwork.com. And let me know if you're enjoying the show or do you have any specific tips you want to hear about or any experts you want to hear on the show. Don't forget to check out all the other great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Plus, stop over to stablescoop.com and sign up to win a bunch of different horse wear and mountain horse stuff. We're giving away over there. You have to sign up before Halloween, so you got a week yet. Stop on over to stablescoop.com and follow the link on the homepage. Well, I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, stay safe, everyone. <laughs>